This is Jeremiah. We're going to look at 19 and 24 here, respectively. Then we're going to get back to Corinthians. I just put up a new beauty lesson. I'll probably make that 7A. And I may even give it a new category. Um, 7A, brand new category. So, um, And um, I'm very happy with that. that we're going to look at Born Twice. A and PM, that's 19. And uh, I only have a few notes to hit on Born Twice. And uh, a, I call it A and PM. Born Twice. We'll get into that momentarily. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We greet you in the only name given. And I have a lesson for the name over here. We're going to redo the name. And I'm going to put up a new uh, table of contents for the name, uh, which, is all, which are all the videos present in uh, playlist number 10 here, okay? And we're going to keep it very simple, and we're going to keep the volume short, so in terms of uh, giving you a table of contents as to what is the name of Jesus Christ and all of that, okay? We talked about it here uh, yesterday, and we talked about titles here, which is 13. I do not have 13 up there the way I want it, but it will be up there shortly. As we are now really hammering home the first 27 or so playlists, and we're putting up a table of content, and this is really going to help the listener, the viewer, okay? Because I'm going to hammer home a lot of the basics that are in Protestantism. I just looked at the history of Protestantism and so forth in the United States in the 18th century here along the eastern seaboard. Um, there was there were only two basic Three basic European fronts uh, in the history of the United States. Um, we're talking about the early colonies, and that would be the West Coast, Spanish Catholicism, uh, Central, which was French Catholicism, and of course there was the Eastern Seaport, which was predominantly Protestant. However, uh, there seems to be quite a bit of a mix in the history of the United States, unfortunately, uh, on, on many levels. Washington itself was owned by a Catholic Jesuit. His name was White. That's why they call it the White House. But um, evidently he was some sort of liaison or some, some, uh, some source of Protestant consternation or the attack on the church from these individuals. But let's get going as we'll just let that go as looking at a little bit of history at the, at the Lutheran, um, Anglican, Quaker, Puritan um, seaboard there. And of course, um, unfortunately, the French were predominantly Catholic, uh, uh, from what I know. A lot of people are mil militaristic and, and they don't really care about religion. They'll just carry something. They'll, they'll have a, a priest follow, follow along with them uh, in, in much of Catholicism. Uh, we just looked at Hernan Cortez, the, the conqueror of Mexico, by himself there. Uh, he was evidently not concerned with religion at all, basically. He, he just... A lot of people are not that much interested, they, but they do have some of these individuals riding along with them. Let's get to Born Twice. This is Jeremiah. This is New Covenant. We have our Bible open up, open to John 2, 3, 4 here, or 3, 4 the Gospel of John, and we're going to talk about that just for a moment, and I'm very, uh, a little anxious to get in uh, Luke and John. Um, as soon as we finish our Corinthians uh, Acts, Book of Acts overview here, as we, as we browse through these two books, or three books, uh, we're going to jump right into Luke in about a week or two, so uh, I'm looking forward. As a matter of fact, what we may do is get into Luke now, um, you know, this week or so, and mix it up because I really miss uh, Luke and John. Uh, Luke and John are what we focus on here probably the most. Matthew, Luke, and John. So, you know, and um, not necessarily Paul or Corinthians or uh, some of the other equipoland um, uh, pieces of literature. Jeremiah, you're on fire. That is a correct observation. We have lots of work here. We're going to get into war next, which is 24 in this ministry, where I talk about war 
and how paul talks about war a lot and this is a battle and i had my wrote some my relatives over here a couple of weeks ago and i was telling my sister and so that my sister that this is war you know that this is not a play thing going on here and even if you fight you might lose a lot of battles you know and and but you'll still win the war but you might you might go through a period of where you the prodigal son went through a lot of loss and uh and he entered into some shame uh, he was completely forgiven by the father of course but the point is is that uh, he didn't have to hit the streets let's put it that way because the bible says that he basically lost his mind when you hit the streets you're losing your mind if you go to this bar around the corner over here as, as an adult you're losing your mind when you get into sin you're losing your mind you regain your mind when you focus on serving the lord in righteousness that's when you regain your mind okay that's what we call the sound doctrine because you have a sound mind when you put all of this in your mind and it dominates you that's why it's called master because his commandments and his way of life is supposed to dominate you and uh and obviously people are going to have problems who are christians in these areas of what's going to dominate you we just looked at romans which paul wonderfully articulates the fact that a lot of Christian people, they're going to have a lot of battles and they're going to give in to a lot of things they shouldn't give in to, but it doesn't mean the war is over. Now, let's get into born twice here, okay? Uh, obviously, uh, John's Gospel, chapter 3 and 4 area are germane to a lot of born twice uh, material. As a matter of fact, it is our cornerstone and it's from the Master in red letters here for the cornerstone scriptures for um, number 19 in this ministry where we start everything it doesn't mean that everything paul gives us a wonderful addition and illumination to being born again and so forth but the master is where we start okay most of the time i start with with the big boss here in red letters on all of these uh concepts and ideas and categories and playlists okay We're not marginalizing John or anybody else, but we're just, uh, the boss is really heavy duty stuff for me. I, I really enjoy, that's why we're, we're bouncing around in Corinth and the book of Acts right now, but I, I might chop it up a little and get back to Luke and John because Luke and John are, are where we want to, I want to hit Luke and John every two, no more than three months expire where we're, where we're back in the, both of those books heavy, okay? I haven't decided how I'm going to reduce things. We, I, I have a reduction plan. But I won't get into that with you right now. Uh, I'll probably reduce half of the book of Acts, half of Romans. Oh, I don't know. You know, um, those two books are easy to reduce. Hebrews can be reduced probably a lot. So, you know, other than that, we're going to have to go scripture by scripture. It's going to take a lot of time, a lot of reading. Uh, but I hope to have five chapters, at least a day, up to ten chapters especially in the smaller books or, or smaller chapters where it takes about 25 minutes to 30 minutes to read those chapters and then we have a video whereby i do a little bit of explaining and sharing with you some of the highlights of those chapters so and then we're going to come back to those chapters in two to three months that's the goal here so that we have a lot of reading Let, let's get to number 19 in this ministry on the playlist which is born twice I call it. All, I also call it AMPM. In other words, it's it's phases, it's periods. There, you know, and that's the way your life is. And let's get to number one, which is Adam has two births. So we we can go through John three five. Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man is born of water and born of the ghost of Father, um, you cannot live. You you won't have eternal life. Let's go to that. This scripture. See, I haven't, I haven't been that scripture in a while, and I don't want that to tell you the truth. I, uh, I tell you the truth all the time, but I mean to tell you that uh, that you, that uh, verily, verily, I say unto thee, and let, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Also, we have very similar verbiage from the Master, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground. So, see, we have the same verbiage uh, from the Master. One of them is born again. And born of the spirit then the next one is born of humiliation let me stop right there 
the birth refers to uh, the, the, the yielding to humiliation and laying down your life for the brethren. As many of you know, that's one of the top 10, 20 scriptures in the Bible, where John and Paul both say that the love of Jesus is laying down your life for the brethren. That goes back to John 13 from the master himself. So the point is, is that the Bible is very taut. The, the railroad tracks are very solid, and it's not that hard to figure out that, that uh, and to come to this very simple conclusion that when he says, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God, it's the same thing as born of the spirit, which is born of humiliation. Birth here is equipollent or equal to you getting on your knees and getting yourself back in line. The, 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 he's God and you ain't. That, that's all this is over and over again. That's... I mean, I, I'm going to elucidate that for you. I'm not going to keep it that simple, but to put it in American terminology, you know, the way we talk here is very blunt. Maybe it's too blunt sometimes, but, uh, uh, you know, get on your knees, be quiet, and do what you're told. I don't want to hear any back talk. And, and I get, you know, as a Bible teacher over, off and on for the years of different ministries, and I, I played music most of my life as a Christian for churches. Um, most of my life, that's what I've done, but I've been part of the ministry off and on, assistant here and assistant there and so forth and, but, I, but I've always been an evangelist and I've done some teaching and, and Bible studies it's only been the past couple of years that I have decided to uh, put my teachings on, on online here I, I used to give out free books to people and some of them I wrote pamphlets okay leaflets and so forth and uh, and that's part of being an evangelist slash teacher right but here's the point the point is is that we have 19 here we're addressing here, which is born twice. I call it AMPM. And Adam basically has two births. The master clearly defines them right here. I wanted to branch this idea out to let you know basically what that birth means or being born again means. It's not something ethereal out there in outer, outer nowhere. It actually has a clear reference to when the master also said, except a, a corn of wheat fall into the ground. You say, Jeremiah, are you getting right back to servanthood again? Well, duh. Okay. I mean, uh, this is very, you know, uh, the master is, you, you might say he's redundant, but he's not redundant. What he's doing is, he's, he's telling you every which way but Sunday that you better get on your knees, be quiet, do what you're told, and be a servant. He does it over and over and over again. That's <laughs> And we looked at this, accept the corn, accept the man, see, accept, accept, accept. In other words, this is what you got to do. That's what that means. Without exception, that's what it means. Without exception, you're going to have to put on a servant mind. In other words, you, you, the Lord wants you to grow like ASAP into what he wants out of you, which is rapid growth. That's what he wants. It doesn't mean you have to grow overnight or anything. That, that's not the point. The point is, is that rapid growth is desired here. That's common sense, or it should be very easy for you to understand. That goes for any teacher or any student or any pupil or any principal or any school of thought anywhere. The, rap the, the more rapid the student learns, the better off everybody is. And we're not going to try to squeeze fruit necessarily before it's time from a tree, but the point is, is that we're here to accelerate growth and to hold on to it. That's the key. We'll talk about that a little bit more later, but let, let's get let's finish born twice here, okay? What is A and P and what is born twice, Jeremiah? Well, John three three says, "Except you be born a less than a man." Let's look at the actual scripture here. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So now we have the word "except" here again, which means it's required. So then we have. Um, Born again, of course, means you, 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 in order to get into heaven, you're going to have to be born again. And then he repeats the same concept. This time, he elucidates the concept of being born again to being born twice. That's the name of this particular playlist, born twice. And so born, born again means you were born once and you were born second time. And you were born of water the first time. And now you're being born of the spirit the second time. Now, I'm, I'm letting you know what this requirement is so that you can enter the kingdom of God. Okay, in other words, it's time to, to accelerate. What is this born? Well, I just showed you. The master said, 
except a, except a corn of wheat, excuse me, fall into the ground. So here we go to the word except again. So he's using the word except, and it means the same thing. That's the point. It's a requirement. And that requirement is a, for a corn of wheat to fall into the ground. So Jeremiah, what does a corn of wheat falling into the ground mean? Is, is, is it the same thing you've been saying a thousand times in your videos? Yeah. Let this mind be in you, Paul the Apostle. Allow, let this. If a man do this, everyone who does this, okay, that means that you can do it or you don't have to do it. That's what it means. That's the number one steering wheel I'm going to talk about a little bit later here. Okay? Which is war and, 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 and there are two steering wheels in this war. There's the commander and there's you. That's basically all there is. And the enemy, of course, is who you're fighting. They're all over the place. They're in your back seat. They're in front of you. They're on the side of the car. They're in your in your in your life. They're they're they're, they're in the morning. They're in the afternoon. They're in your window. They're knocking on your door. The, 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 the Jehovah Witnesses are knocking on your door. There, there's the devil again. So the devil's all over the place. I saw him at the AM PM or the grocery store over here the other day. The the convenience store. Guy walked in with his pants all the way down. He looked around like he's about ready to shoot somebody. That's the profile of a murderer. I, I spent some time in the hood. That guy is, is, a, is a stone cold straight up gang member and they wander around and when they feel like it, they shoot people and they hope that people let them out, like some Democrats or even Republicans. They, they let them run out of jail, you know, that's, and that's what they're hoping for, they can, so they can do it again. Hurt people, murder, lie, steal, cheat, cheat, whatever they do, right? But the gentleman walked in the store, his pants were all the way down. I don't know how his pants were hold, held up. It, it, uh, it's a miracle. They must sew the pants onto their underwear or something. But the guy was walking and he stood there. He walked into the convenience store. He looked around. I don't think he wanted anything in the store. But the point is, is that, you know, the devil's all over the place. We're, 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 you're in the valley of the shadow of death every day, especially now in the United States, even more and more than before. Babies are in trouble at the abortion clinic around the corner. Uh, over here uh, at the convenience store, you were in trouble of a guy shooting the gun. They like shooting guns, and they really love shooting people. That, that's what they like doing. And if you can't have to figure that out, then you're, you're slow. And you're, we're in the valley of the shadow of, of the death. That gentleman, in my opinion, that's just a, an opinion of mine. I, I've seen these guys quite a bit. I used to work uh, at a couple of... Um, schools at the, uni at the Unified School District out there in California, and I saw them all the time, gang members, all the time. Some of them would shoot the schools up and something, and, okay, listen, it's hell on earth right now, and, and that's just the way it is, people. I mean, they, we have lockdowns in the schools where the children are hiding, and, and one of the, one of the uh, people in the community are shooting the front of the school, or, you know, they're putting out yellow tape and all of this. This is your real world, okay? Disneyland, and, and, and when I lived in Anaheim, near Anaheim in California, I went there quite a bit. That lifestyle is basically G-O-N-E. It's just gone. Not that, not that it's, it was ever perfect, but um, uh, we, we had one gunshot every 15 years in my community. It was a predominantly black community, too. We had one gunshot, I think I heard, in 15 years. In the entire community, just about. Go to that same kind of community right now, well, there's like, whoo, I don't know how many gunshots there are every night. We had one murder in 15 years, I think, in that community. Two, two murders. I think there was a total of three that, we, that I knew of, and that was about it. Three African-American gentlemen dead. Liquor store owner, uh, record salesman, who sold soul music, and another guy... Um, who was selling drugs or something, but three that I knew of, so in 15 years there might have been a total of, I don't know, maybe 10 dead people in 15 years in a pretty large community. 
So you, you know, you, your your life right now is hanging on a thread. Now it's home invasions, whatever. And we're not here to get, we're not here to, to be afraid. The, the the Lord is my shepherd. I have no want. You know, uh, he he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And uh, thou, O Lord, art a shield about me. And uh, we're we're not here to. God has not given me a spirit of fear. But, you know, God gives you a spirit of love and of peace and, and a sound mind. And this is what we have. And uh, although we are still in the valley of the shadow of death. But let's get going back to uh, born again, to born twice. And we looked at both references to chapters 3, 3 and 3, 5. Both of them are, and then the Lord gives further explanation in chapter 6, which we'll get into later, okay? And uh, which I'm chomping at the bit to get into that because that's really the beautiful cornerstone intellectualism that we enjoy here, which is knowing reality, knowing science. The master is giving you science right there, that the human body is different than a spirit body, and that there's a ghost that comes in you, which is basically a spirit, and it hangs out with your spirit, so there's two spirits. In you is four ounces, and it's called a spirit. Suke, soul, so that's what you have. And when you die, it leaves your body. Now, let's get back to born twice, germane. So we have two births generally, and we just mentioned those. And let's talk about the second is being born again. And that's the key one. That's the key birth. Now, number three in this, because uh, I have about five points I want to make, but there's only basically two. And let me not get, let's not get confused. Basically, born twice is born twice. Now, in the first birth, there's like two things going on, and in the second birth, there's two things going on. Okay? In to I'm talking about the spiritual birth right now. In other words, your spiritual birth has basically two periods. And the, the, there are two periods that, that, that you might want to call births, but let's let that word go for a minute. Let's talk about, first of all, you're born, and then you're born again. Now, we're done with that, right? Then, there's the second part of this, when you're born again, there's basically two periods, okay? Let's talk about that. When you're born again, there are two periods of life. Now, let's talk about the first period. So don't get confused, you can get confused here, but we've already talked about two periods of being born in water and being born in the spirit. That's being a Christian, okay? Now we're going to talk about one period, which is your body, on this earth as a Christian. That's it, okay? One life. Let's separate that life as a Christian into two parts. Now, the first part is ability, access, being drawn by grace, and that is to elimination and illumination, okay? Which is basically one period, which is you getting founded and rooted and getting started as a Christian making Jesus Christ your Savior and his Lord and you being his servant and all of that initiation process as you start your baby steps as a Christian. That's, that's number one. Okay? Now, let's break that initiation into two parts, which is you have to have an ability, being born again, you have, God has to have access to you, and you have to be drawn to the Son. That's basically number one. Now, in the initiation process, the second step is for you to accept what's available to you. Got that? So there's access and ability and being drawn, and then there's taking in the baptism and repentance and the gospel, death, burial, resurrection, and putting confidence in this reality, this truth. You're putting confidence in this. So two periods to you getting started. That's, that's all it says, okay? Now, that first period is by grace that you were called and you were sprinkled and washed and basically you were clean as a whistle when you walked out of Egypt or when you got up out of the water in church or something along those lines in repentance. Let me remind you that if you can't find water or you are no one's there to baptize you, 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 you can still be, repent and be saved. Baptism is something based upon basically convenience. 
It's not as though it's necessarily required of you. It's just that you may not have time to do it. I, I could be talking to a lady who lives in Sharia law, surrounded by Muslims, and she's going to tell her Muslim friends that I don't want Allah anymore, and I don't want to be cursed. That's what the word means. It's basically it basically means like six six six. In case you didn't know that, but uh, and the reason why they're cursed, of course, is because they say Jesus Christ is not the Son of God. And what's the, what's the most important thing for a human being born of Adam for two thousand years? Uh, that you accept the Son of God. I'll say it again. The most important thing for any human being for 2,000 years is for you to accept and kneel to the only begotten Son of God and to declare Him as the Son of God. That's like top of the line. That's required of you. So if anyone tells you that God has no Son, they just curse themselves and they curse everyone around them. You're damned. Because you just committed the unpardonable sin, which is you are rejecting the Holy Spirit telling you the truth and the only way for you to receive the removal of your sins. That's it. That's all there is to this. Okay? Now, the first period I call AMPM, which is, the, this is whereby you are entering into uh, periods of your life, and it starts with the grace of God coming to you and sprinkling you and getting you started. Okay? You, you need to be alive and accessible. You need to hear the gospel. Now you must allow the gospel to come to you. You must accept it. You must kneel. You must be, you, you must receive the illumination. You're now the real Illuminati here. And, and you are now an initiate. And you got started. And you're a babe in Christ. And he's now your master and Lord. And you're his servant. And he's also your father. And you are his child. And this is what you've just entered into. Okay? Now, that is the basic first period. Let's go into the second period. The second period, or epoch, you might call it, is you're going to stand in the grace that you received. This is a big time period where the Master refers to you standing in this grace. In other words, you stood in the grace when you knelt down. When you knelt down before Jesus Christ and you were repented, baptized, etc., you entered into you, you entered into grace, and you entered into uh, standing. And, and putting confidence in reality. And you entered into wisdom. See, now you're smart. You're smart now because you're, you're doing what you, what's, what's, what's um, profitable for you now. Okay? So the second period is beginning now because you've been through your initiation You've learned a few things. Now it's time to hammer home what you've done. What, what, is it, what is it that I exactly have coming to me? What is required of me? What, what is loving Jesus Christ? What is that? Okay, boots on the ground. I want to know, and that means you're smart. Because you want to know how to love Jesus Christ. He has a thousand words to tell you how to do it. So why not let, why not take time out and do it and learn, okay? He said, learn of me. That's what Jesus said. So that's what we're doing right now. If you love me, you, you'll basically learn of me. So that's what we're doing. So now you're fulfilling the royal law of loving Jesus Christ. That's the royal law, that you love the Son of God. And he speaks truth. You listen to it. And you speak it. And you lay your life down for his church. Is that difficult to understand? No, it's not. Now, let's talk about the second period of Christianity right now. I talk about this quite often because a lot of scriptures that we're going to read and that I've read to you before, they usually fall into two categories, your initiation process and post-initiation. And both of them are very significant because the Bible talks about them a lot. And God and the Lord Jesus Christ separates them quite often. Your initiation in the parable of the sower and then post-initiation. And, and, and your, your initiation is, is extremely serious. Because not everybody is going to go through their initiation process. They're going to be, they're, they're going to be things that block them from be, being born again. And the Lord's going to allow these things to exist. That's how he works. Okay? He's going to allow things to distract you, disturb you, block you from going to the church service to get saved and so forth. Generally here in America. So... And people who find things that block them from doing that, that is the, basically the devil's job, and that's what he, that's what he does 24-7. He's always blocking salvation. 
And the Lord allows him to do that for, for various reasons. So you having ability and access and drawn, and then you for you to fulfill the initiation, uh, which, which is number one, you know, that, that's your first period of Christianity, for you to get that first period successfully done is cool because that's where you start your salvation road. And this, of course, will spring up into eternal life. We'll, we'll mention here a little later here, which is John 4, 36, which goes into what? The second period of Christianity. John 4, 36 talks about you being steadfast and faithful and remaining on the narrow brick road and, and skewing evil, and now you're a winner. And now you own your life because you went through everything properly. And that's why the word faithful is used. We'll talk about that a little later. The word faithful is very significant. It means that you were confident that the, this love life and truth life and denial life was something that you thought was worth it. That's what John 4, 436 means. We'll get to momentarily. I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. Okay? Because the second period has a goal, and so does the first period that you have as a Christian. Both of them have a goal for you to go through first initiation properly and second initiation properly. Now, first initiation in America is not considered that significant because it's a standard procedure here, if you're not Catholic or something, to go through proper uh, uh, Protestant procedures. And that, as far as initiation goes. That goes for almost all Protestant churches, no matter where you go. Anglican, this one, that one, Lutheran, uh, uh, Wesleyan, uh, it doesn't matter. All of them. Quaker, uh, Mennonite, Amish, all the different factions we have in this country from, from the 18th century, they all basically tell you to get baptized as an adult and do things properly in that order. Now, what happens to you after you're, you, you're repentant and baptized, a lot of these churches have different methods or, or different in introductions as to what you should do after that standard initiation. You understand that? Which makes America, in many ways, a very great place because at least they got that correct. Most churches in America that are not Catholic and so forth and, 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 uh, and, and demon doctrine oriented, they always do things properly pertaining to your initiation. And that's good. Unfortunately, the problem is is that the second phase of Christianity in some of these factions or these denominations, uh, there's, there are some big problems, okay? In other words, a good Protestant church will take you to both of these periods in your life as a Christian, and, you, and, you'll, and you'll handle both of them properly and do, do, do that which is required of you, okay? Now, let's talk about this for a moment. Your first phase of Christianity which is ability and yielding to conversion, right? Your first period can be your last period. What if 